Thanks a lot, uh, Chris, for, for uh, the introduction and, and sincerely thank you for thinking of us uh, for your anchor, uh, anchor position to uh, uh, the conference. I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to come and speak to you all today. Um, and I, I'm hopeful that it'll be particularly fitting in that, um, you know, what, what I hope we paint the picture of in this presentation is, is opportunity. Uh, and that that uh, creates some momentum. I, I, having looked at the program uh, for the conference for the past uh, uh, three months of, of delivery, I think lots of inspiring ideas there, lots of interesting tactics being deployed. And uh, if there's one message that I hope you walk away from uh, with this presentation is FCM is very much open for business to support you in that uh, journey towards more resilient infrastructure uh, and that that path to uh, to net zero uh, for our, uh, our communities. Um, and so what I'd like to cover today, I'm, I'm hopeful that folks are familiar with the FCM, but just a very quick uh, overview of the, the why we exist and uh, what, 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 why we do what we do. Um, and um, uh, also talk about how our approach to supporting the sector has evolved. Uh, over the years, um, you know, starting from some seed opportunities that have really sort of grown uh, over time um, and uh, really paint the picture of the various support uh, aspects we have uh, through our programming that, uh, that can help every step of the way from the idea phase all the way through to uh, full-blown uh, implementation and, and execution of, uh, of projects. Uh, and if we have the time, uh, share a few examples of, of communities that um, have really accelerated uh, their path to resilience and net zero by tapping into some, ta tapping into some of the, uh, the funding offers and capacity offers that we have in, uh, in FCM's programs. Um, so, you know, quick overview of FCM. Hopefully folks uh, are familiar with us, but uh, really are the national voice for municipalities across uh, the country represent more than 90% of uh, Canada's uh, municipalities um, and really uh, probably best known for the advocacy work that we do that translates to um, you know policy and regulations that meet municipalities where where they need them uh, to be uh, but also particularly over the past uh, a few years uh, has led to really some, some momentous um, um, investments in the sector, uh, in infrastructure renewal, in green infrastructure. Uh, we've seen as recently as last week in the federal budget, uh, some, some fairly significant investments uh, across areas that are useful for uh, the municipal uh, sector. So certainly what tends to be um, best known, uh, for, or SCM tends to be best known for, but it's not the only thing we do, um, one of our best kept secrets uh, is the programming uh, we deliver to uh, support the sector. And really, uh, the organization feels that part is equally important because, you know, regulations and policies are great for setting sort of the floor on performance um, in, in the sector, but they don't necessarily push us to a higher level of ambition and a, an acceleration of, of transformation. Also, investments, we know they're much needed. We know there's uh, a, a sort of funding gap for uh, infrastructure uh, that's been there for a long time and recent investments will certainly uh, help municipalities um, uh, address transition to a more resilience and, and uh, climate change mitigation. Um, but we also know there's all kinds of new challenges on, on the horizon for, uh, for cities and, and municipalities, not the least of which is the financial challenges caused by uh, the last year and a half of, of pandemic, which has really sort of tightened up uh, budgets. So what becomes really important in that context is execution capacity. Uh, and that's really where FCM's programs uh, focus. It's around building the skills, uh, the knowledge, the experience, uh, but also unlocking examples of what, what might work, right? Supporting some experimentation in the sector so that some new solutions can be crafted and tested, and then mobilizing the ones that work uh, more broadly uh, in, uh, in the sector. And really that, that, that overall approach is about building confidence uh, in the sector, building confidence that we can go beyond business as usual, go beyond an increment, incremental improvement and really uh, drive towards that, that longer transition on a shorter time frame. Um, and, you know, the, 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 the hope that we have in each one of our sort of program intervention areas is that 
we create a sort of critical mass, a critical mass of knowledge, of skills, people with skills, uh, a critical mass of viable solutions, of examples of projects that worked. And then when we take that critical mass and we pair it with the funding side, right? The funding that becomes uh, available through uh, other orders of government, but also through uh, FCM's uh, programs, then we really get a sort of a physics equation of, you know, mass plus funding as an accelerant equals that, that force for tr transformation. Um, and what we found over recent years in particular is the, this, the, by creating the critical mass of, of options for the sector, uh, we're really seeing some quick transitions in some places that that give us hope that you know that those audacious long-term plays may may happen sooner than uh, uh, we had hoped. Um, and as introduced uh, in in uh, Chris's introduction, um, one of the best examples of how we've kind of created critical mass and seen momentum created is in the work we've done in our uh, climate change uh, programming. Um, this started way back uh, over 25 years ago with the Partners for Climate uh, Protection Program, um, which was a response to the early days of realizing that we needed to reduce emissions. We were starting to see international commitments on emissions reductions, and really municipalities were at the beginning of that journey, needed to raise awareness about uh, climate change, needed to inventory the problem, you know, what, what, was, what were municipalities contributing to emissions and, and start uh, drafting some, some initial plans for how to address them. But what became clear very quickly is there was an implementation gap. Uh, there weren't enough sort of solutions that were tested, tried and true. Um, there wasn't enough um, sort of that sort of funding support for actual capital projects and so on. And so uh, as a result of the advocacy from the FCM, uh, the GMF, the Green Municipal Fund was created as that original sort of experimentation space to support the sector and in, in really starting to move towards implementation on action uh, on, on climate change. Um, and if, if you look at where we were then and where we are now, it's been a really tremendous story uh, of growth uh, just on the, the, the GMF alone. Uh, having gone from um, you know, 100 million as the seed fund to uh, about 1.6 billion under total management and, and an endowment within that of 1 billion. Um, but there's also been sort of sister initiatives and sister programs that have complemented uh, what the GMF does that have been launched uh, over the past five years as well, that, which really starts to show us kind of spreading out a little bit more and, and being more and more comprehensive and sophisticated in our approach to, uh, to support the sector. Um, and if we look at, you know, our work on, on sort of infrastructure and asset management uh, in particular over the year, it's, it's kind of evolved in parallel to our, our climate change work. And what we're seeing now is an increasing connection between uh, sort of asset management and infrastructure renewal work and uh, what we're doing in climate and, and resilience. Um, you know, I think many folks on this call are, are probably familiar with uh, InfraGuide, but that was one of the first big uh, forays the FCM did on on um, asset management and, and infrastructure renewal. So in the early uh, 2000, we partnered on the creation of very comprehensive uh, uh, guidance to um, asset uh, practitioners and municipal practitioners to, to provide um, support on how best to renew assets that were up for renewal, how to replace and so on to get the best performing solutions that uh, were available at that time. Arguably the most downloaded resource uh, we have uh, created over the years and we still get regular inquiries for uh, if there's an up-to-date uh, version of the Infra Guide and uh, we are seeing signs that that may happen uh, soon, which would, uh, which would be great. Uh, but then it evolved into, you know, understanding the landscape more, more completely in terms of what was the state of repair or disrepair, or disrepair in, in the sector of, of key uh, infrastructure across uh, communities and, and really trying to get a sense of what's the investment gap that's going to be required to uh, address uh, the, that infrastructure and, and renew it and prepare it for the long term. Uh, and that was done through the Canadian Infrastructure Report Card, again, a, a partnership that uh, FCM participated in. Uh, and that piece of work really informed FCM's advocacy for the next uh, decade, really led to us um, advocating for more resources for infrastructure uh, at the federal level, um, but also inspired uh, some new program uh, and programming directions. Um, and so we, we started to more formally have 
asset management programming show up through a pilot initiative uh, uh, delivered out of the Green Municipal Fund uh, back in 2014, 2015, which was called the Leadership in Asset Management Program. It really looked to start the journey of connecting climate change and sustainability to asset management strategies and, and uh, policies. Started with a cohort of 12 municipalities from across Canada um, and culminated in the creation of a first sort of guidebook uh, from the FCM in, in this uh, space, which was released, I believe, in, in 2018, 2019. Um, and, and we saw lots of interest in, in that uh, initiative and a lot of uh, potential, and uh, that translated to, to further opportunity for federal uh, funding for, for more programming. Um, so in, in budget 2016, we saw 50 million uh, investment in the municipal asset management program, which supports uh, capacity development across the country and asset management practices really strives to increase the asset management readiness of the, of the sector, particularly in light of the large in this infrastructure investments on the table for the for, for the next decade. Uh, we also saw a 75 million uh, program called Municipal I Municipalities for Climate Innovation, which I believe uh, you would have heard from Devin earlier in, in the programming, perhaps a, a month ago on some of the work that program does, but really look to raise awareness about best practices in, in climate change mitigation for you know, planning and, and projects, but also was our first foray into adaptation and resilience and weaving that into uh, considerations. Uh, a lot of pioneering work out of that program. And we also saw a top up to the GMF at that time, recognizing that there was in increasing momentum and we needed to keep resourcing the GMF to uh, serve on the implementation side of initiatives. Uh, and then, yeah, 2019 saw a really momentous uh, uh, evolution, uh, both um, due to really strong demand for our, our MAMP program. Um, we saw an additional 60 million, which effectively doubled the reach of that program and extended uh, its duration by uh, three years, uh, as well as a 950 million uh, investment into uh, the GMF, which really started to give us a, a, an ability to be very comprehensive in the energy efficiency space uh, in, in particular. And I'll, I'll shed a little more light into what that 950 million will be uh, supporting uh, a little later in, in the presentation. Uh, so next slide, please. And so that, that kind of describes the journey we've been on both in terms of GMF and our, our overall approach to asset management and infrastructure. Um, but, you know, it, it's not just about receiving funding. We're, we're actually quite proud of the results uh, we've achieved so far. And going back to my earlier re uh, comments um, and framing around creating a critical mass around intervention areas, I think these results really uh, demonstrate that. So first, you know, on the MAMP program, the Municipal Asset Management Program, um, over the past five years, um, we've supported over 900 municipal asset management projects, all, all corners of the country, all size of municipalities, uh, and delivered over 500 um, uh, training events uh, through 18 uh, uh, partners, always trying to bring a regional and, and um, uh, sort of provincial lens, recognizing the differences across uh, the country to, uh, to that work. Uh, next slide, please. Um, in the Municipal Climate Innovation Program, uh, 300, over 300 initiatives uh, supported, 900 training events, uh, over 15,000 practitioners um, uh, engaged in our uh, programming and delivery through 159 uh, partners, again, across the country to really help mobilize in, in the local context. Uh, and next slide, please. Um, and the Green Municipal Fund, a little longer standing, it's been around for 20 years, but uh, almost 1,400 initiatives uh, funded across all sectors, transportation, waste, uh, land use, uh, wastewater treatment, uh, and energy, uh, almost a billion dollars in capital invested in the sector. Uh, that's created over 11,000 job years, so not just an environment story, also an economic year, leverage of $3 billion from other orders of government and private sector. and. 2.7 megatons of uh, emissions uh, reductions uh, so far. So pretty great track record, but not, not satisfied with that yet. Uh, we're just at the beginning of, of the journey. And yes, we're creating critical mass in a few areas of intervention, but we really want to see an acceleration of those results uh, over the next little while. Um, and next slide, please. 
And that's really where uh, budget 2019 kind of comes to play in a, in a really interesting way. Um, two things that were distinct about um, what we received for the, the Green Municipal Fund in that uh, budget. One was it allowed us to start um, supporting not just uh, investments in direct municipally owned uh, assets, but also allowed us to start tackling the issue of community uh, assets. We all know that uh, many municipalities have very aggressive climate change plans um, aiming for net zero by 2050, net zero by 2080. Um, and they're not just looking at municipal assets, they're also looking at the community assets. So a part of this new programming allows us to get at the residential sector, the affordable housing sector. Uh, so two program streams announced there to support uh, the first one supports the creation of, of financing uh, programs at the local level to support energy retrofits in the residential uh, sector. Um, it, it, it will have an impact both in terms of energy efficiency, but also in terms of creating new fiscal tools for municipalities by leveraging local improvement charges and, and PACE type uh, financing. Uh, and then the sustainable affordable housing stream um, allows us to do deep energy retrofits and net zero new builds uh, in the affordable housing uh, sector in partnership with, with municipalities. And what's unique about that stream is it really was one of the first in the country to aim for net zero now uh, on, uh, on building uh, design and implementation. And then the third stream is a combination of um, deploying um, the uh, atmospheric fund model uh, out of the GTHA uh, more broadly, so seeding uh, several TAF-like uh, entities and other urban centers across Canada. Uh, but the other half of that third 350 million stream is to go towards municipal assets, so recreational facilities, uh, arenas and community centers, and looks to do, uh, again, major energy retrofits uh, to that building stock to really drive it towards uh, net zero. All these are live, we're open for business uh, on all of them, and, and they combine both capacity building support and funding um, in, in parallel. Uh, next slide, please. And you know what, what I hope you start to interpret from all this and, and see as our evolution is we've really started to create a complete cycle of, of offering to the sector. Uh, we have both knowledge and capacity support each step of the way, as well as funding support each step of the way, which hopefully creates a nice glide path for initiatives to get done on a, on a faster time frame. So we support, you know, origination work, uh, preparation uh, work, so the feasibility analysis, the procurement and construction phase through capital projects and grants. Um, but we're now even tapping into beyond that construction phase, we're supporting data collection uh, at the operation and maintenance phase of facilities, uh, and even now putting on the table recommissioning financing, uh, where buildings didn't perform at the level they were supposed to originally, going back in, doing the right adjustments so that they get to the standard that they originally sought uh, from an energy performance point of view. Uh, and once you go through the cycle once, the great thing is you can do it again on the next asset in your uh, priority list and, and we're there to support uh, each step of the way. Um, so next slide, please. Uh, and hopefully I'm still good on time. Um, just uh, the, the way I thought I'd close is by sharing a couple specific examples of communities that have uh, taken part in our programming in, in recent years. Um, and give a sense of how quickly they were uh, able to go from sort of foundational planning uh, and assessment to uh, meaningful projects uh, uh, being built uh, that will have long-term resilience uh, benefits and will get them to net zero uh, more rapidly. Um, so the first uh, example, City of Windsor, um, first uh, participated with us in our, our pilot uh, LAMP program, Leadership and Asset Management program, uh, five, six years ago, uh, and we're one of the first of that program to build in sustainability and climate change into their asset management strategies. Um, and that really sort of raised awareness, uh, built capacity on the asset management side. They've participated heavily in, in our MAMP uh, program as a key, uh, key resource uh, community. Um, but they then tapped into f funding from our Municipal Climate Innovation uh, Program twice, uh, first to do 
to conduct an assessment of climate risks um, and, and um, to map out a, a sort of plan to respond to uh, risks, uh, particularly an adaptation plan. And they took that a step forward and, and studied um, uh, the, the impacts of climate change on their drainage and stormwater management uh, system. Um, so two separate uh, supports from uh, the FCM, about I think 250,000 in funding. Um, and all, all that analysis and work, particularly on the, the drainage and storm water management, then um, parlayed into uh, 30 million in funding from the DMAF program uh, to actually do some infrastructure improvements to their storm water management uh, system, which sets them up for having resolved one key resilience issue uh, over the long term in, in um, the face of uh, climate change. Uh, and all this within a four to five year uh, time frame. So, you know, historically we see 10, 15 year horizons for these kinds of changes to take place and really see a, a catalytic effect happening when you have a complete service offering to support uh, municipalities. Um, and then the second example, maybe my last uh, slide uh, before I, I move to concluding uh, remarks uh, would be um, Central Elgin. Uh, also a community that participated in FCM's programming, started with uh, MAMP getting direct uh, funding support, but also participated heavily in, in many uh, events, capacity building uh, sessions uh, and so on to, to build up their uh, asset management uh, uh, expertise and really prepare themselves uh, for the future. And uh, they started their journey in, in 2018, 2019, I believe uh, with, uh, with our programs. Uh, and in 2020, uh, recognizing that one of their key assets, the Port Stanley uh, fire station was at the end of its life, um, needed to make a decision on what the best long-term solution would be to that asset. Uh, and they had the confidence to look at a net zero facility. Um, and so they received GMF funding to do a detailed feasibility study, assess is, is, that, is that doable now? Uh, to go to net zero on, on such a key a piece of their uh, infrastructure. And the conclusion was, was sound. And, and yes, uh, they could go there. And they then converted that to $3.7 in funding from the Green Municipal Fund to actually undertake the capital project and build, uh, build this facility. And what I really like about um, this, this story in particular uh, is um, that, um, first of all, it's a net zero now. We're not waiting uh, 25 years uh, like the uh, uh, nationwide objective is to get the net zero by 2050. We're, we're actually moving to that uh, 25 years uh, early. Uh, but also, you know, this new facility will have 45% less uh, energy consumption and costs, which means more resilience from a financial point of view. Uh, over the long term, uh, reduces construction waste by 95% uh, uh, and addresses the resilience piece by having on-site uh, renewables. Uh, it adds to energy security on, on a really key uh, asset uh, in the community. Uh, and again, all, all this happening in the span of two to three years, which is, is quite remarkable, but indicative of the types of leaps um, we can take now with, with some of the support uh, that's out there. Um, so maybe moving to the last uh, two slides, the, the, the next one, please. I'll just skip this one in the interest of time, but certainly encourage you to look at the Halton Hills uh, story as well, profiled in a few ways on, on uh, the GMF or the FCM website. Um, and I'll just close where I started, which is, you know, my, my hope in this presentation is uh, to hopefully give more momentum to some of the ideas and, and some of the initiatives folks are, are exploring through uh, their own work and through uh, this conference um, and, and encourage you to check, check us out. Come, come visit the FCM website, our latest program that was launched two weeks ago, the Community Buildings Retrofit uh, Program, um, which addresses arenas and recreational facilities. But uh, as I said, full offering uh, available through our MAMP program and GMF uh, that are all live right now. And the last slide just has our contact information uh, for folks who are uh, interested in, in connecting with us, but the easiest way is just to visit uh, the FCM website. As I said, we're here to help.